Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning, and welcome to the Guilford Community Church, and happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. If you are seated near the center of the aisle, please sign our registration book, and immediately following our service, I invite you to coffee hour. This morning's coffee hour is hosted by our Human Resources Committee, but we, we want the men to clean up, so if you're a man, raise your hand. Awesome. See you downstairs in about 40 minutes. And uh, speaking of that, we do need one woman to join us on our mission trip July 2nd to the 8th to Altoona, Pennsylvania. We have five young ladies going with us, and we do need one woman chaperone as well. So if you're able to do that, please speak with me after the service. And I know that Amber has an announcement or two to make. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. Um, our next event that we have placed is next Saturday. Uh, we're going to be meeting here at 11:30 and doing the hike up Mount Row, um, and eating lunch up there, and then hiking back down. So, if you would like to, or anyone you know who would like to be involved, um, please let me know this week and uh, meet me at 11:30 on Saturday. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Amber. And now, just take a moment to reflect on why we've gathered here today. Thank you, Carolyn, and please stand and join me in our call to worship. We come from different places, having had different experiences. Some of us come from busy homes with many people. Some of us live alone. This week has been different for each of us. Some of us have had happy news we want to celebrate. 
Some of us have faced grief and need to cry. Yet we all come to this same place, seeking what makes us whole, and remain standing as we sing together hymn number 28, For the Beauty of the Earth. Please be seated and join me now in a word of prayer. We greet and welcome this beautiful day as a gift. And now as we settle into this place, we give voice to our gratitude. Grateful for all the things that brought us joy and pleasure this week. Grateful for those things that sustain us. Friendship, the beauty of New England in the spring. High school students off to prom, children playing on the playground, a meal enjoyed with someone special, and always the love or memory of our moms. May this time together help us to embrace, embrace this moment as a gift to be enjoyed, a gift to be savored. And now we repeat the words that Jesus taught long ago, words that began our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Timothy verses 1 through 7. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, God himself chose me to be an apostle, and he gave me the promised life that Jesus Christ makes possible. Timothy, you are like a dear child to me. I pray that God our Father and our Lord Christ Jesus will be kind and merciful to you and will bless you with peace. Do not be ashamed of the Lord, 
Night and day I mention you in my prayers. I am always grateful for you. I pray to the God my ancestors and I have served with a clear conscience. I remember how you cried, and I want to see you because that will make me truly happy. I want to. I also remember the genuine faith of your mother Eunice. Your grandmother Lois had the same sort of faith, and I am sure that you have it as well. So I ask you make full use of the of the gift that God gave you when I placed my hands on you. Use it well. God's spirit doesn't make cowards out of us. The spirit gives us power, love, and self-control. <coughs> Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. And if, that was beautiful. And if Landon will come forward, you're going to have your time with your mom. All right, Landon, this might be a little awkward, but today's a special day. What day is it? Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Have you done anything special for me yet? Yes. Yes. You have? What you have? What have you done? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, so you haven't done it yet. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, it's a surprise. A surprise. Okay. So, what's your favorite thing about your mom? She's kind. What did you say? I said she's kind. Ah. I have to tell you, my mom is kind too. And my favorite thing about my mom is that whenever I need her, she's always there, always there for me. And I think moms are pretty special, but can you think of any other special women in your life? 
This is for anybody. Who, if it's not your mom, who other, other special women in your life? Do you have any? My teacher. Oh, teacher. Anybody else? <laughs> Help Landon out? Yeah. A grandmother, an my, aunt. My pianist. The pianist. <laughs> How about a neighbor or a coach? A best friend. A best friend. All these women can be important in your life as you grow and you develop. Now, I have a special poem that I found that I wanted to read to all the children today, but I think the moms can relate to this, and it's called, My Baby You Will Always Be. My mother, my baby you will always be, no matter where you are. You're like a little part of me, whether you're near or far. I counted all your tiny toes when you were fresh and new. Words can't express how proud I was that I'd be given you. Your tiny little newborn face I couldn't loved more. And though those, your face was new to me, t'was like we'd met before. And so each day you grow and grow as I look proudly on, until one day I looked and saw your baby days were gone. But once my baby, you will always stay. That way for all my days, my baby, you will always be, and I'll love you every day. Now, the Sunday school class has been working several months on this, and we have been able to make all the moms hand lilies. And so each child in our Sunday school class that has uh, participated in Sunday school from January to now, uh, we have traced their hands and each one of you moms are gonna receive one of their hands today. So, are there any great, great grandmothers in our congregation? Oh, we've got one. Uh, Lana, can you grab your hand that up? And if Clark and Mackenzie could possibly help Landon with this, this may go a little quicker. Are there any great grandmothers? Oh, there's a great great grandmother? One more great great? We're up in the choir. Now, could I, I should have you all stand, but could I have the great grandmothers stand? If you can, the great grandmothers. If you are a great grandmother. And now all the grandmothers out there, if you could stand, stand on up. Don't forget the choir, ladies. And now if all the mothers could stand, all the mothers. And one last, if you have, oh, the choir people. And any 
anybody that is a woman that has made such an important role in a child's life, please stand and get recognized as well. I think we covered everybody. Go ahead. Awesome. And I thank Landon and Mackenzie and Clark for helping me out today. But if you look at your hand, Lily, you'll see the name of the child. Um, that's hand is there. Oh, thank you. And um, I, again, want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. Enjoy. Thank you, AJ. And please, please join me in the Mother's Day litany printed in your bulletin. Today we celebrate mothers in all their diversity. Mothers who experience the joy and challenge of pregnancy and childbirth to bring another human being into the world. Mothers who nurtured, cared for, and protected a tiny, helpless baby to become a fully fledged, independent human being. Mothers who are always there in crisis and still are. Mothers who put their children before themselves in their own careers and ambitions. Mothers who provide their love to a child through adoption or fostering. Mothers who spend a whole lifetime loving and caring for their children. Mothers who continue to share their love and knowledge as a grandparent. But today we also remember. Mothers who have experienced the heartache of losing a child. Mothers who decided that the best thing to do for their child was to put him or her out for adoption. Mothers who have struggled to bring up a child alone and in poverty. Mothers whose children are far away. Our thoughts today are also with them. We remember too. 
grandmothers, aunts, sisters and nieces, and the many other women who loved us and sometimes raised us in the absence of our mothers. The women who longed to be mothers but couldn't. And now stand as we sing together hymn number 300, Jesus Shall Reign. Tell me about blank. You can fill in that. Tell me about blank. Most often it's tell me about your mom or your dad. But sometimes it's a son or a daughter, grandma, grandpa, brother or sister. Tell me about. More than half the funerals I do are for people I never knew. So when I ask that question, I'm kind of like a detective trying to unravel a great mystery the awesome mystery of a unique human being. Sadly, already three times this year I've had to ask grieving parents that question. Tell me about Misha, about Sydney, about Dennis. Two teenagers and a young man in his 20s. Those are the worst. Now sometimes when I ask that question, silence fills the room. People aren't quite sure where to begin or what to say. And a few times as I've asked that question, what I heard shocked me. Because sometimes the people we bury aren't all that nice. Once a widow actually told me, I'm glad the SOB is dead. I wish it had happened years ago. I hope I never hear those words from any of you. <laughs> But most of the times, the memories flow, and it seems that the grieving loved ones are almost grateful for mom or dad. The conversations are peppered with statements like, 
remember when mom or remember when dad took us or wasn't it fun when we did this? There's something healing about story and memories. And even though I've asked that question over a thousand times over 30 years, every time I ask it, I'm a little bit nervous. And before I meet with the family, I sit in my office and I kind of anticipate questions people might ask. About a year ago, I met with two men two sons who were in my office to tell me about their mom. And as I prepared for, prepared for this meeting, I felt kind of good about it. I thought this would be an easy meeting. See, I'd read her obituary, died peacefully at 98, surrounded by her two loving sons. And then on the website of the funeral home, I read the comments that her friends had made about her, and I knew that she lived a wonderful, long, adventurous life. And so as I kind of played things out in my mind, I thought, this will be a piece of cake. Perhaps a little pain expressed at her loss, but most of that would certainly be tempered by her long, loving life. But when we met, they came in almost crying. They were completely devastated. They were both in their late 70s. One of them said, I was blindsided by her death. And the other said, I can't imagine a world without my mom. I didn't know where to begin. I wanted to say, really? <laughs> 98, and you never thought about the fact that one day she wouldn't be here? Sadly, some people have not embraced the concept that none of us makes it out of here alive. We live in a death-denying culture. And too often, though, religion is marketed as the ultimate get-out-of-jail card, with its insistence that life here is only a prelude, after which I would say that was beautiful, Carolyn. <laughs> but life is not a prelude. Now, all of those conversations I've had over the years led me back to a conversation that took place 12 years ago when my dad and my sisters and I met with a minister who asked questions like, Clayton, tell me about Phyllis. And Peggy, Trisha, Michael, tell me about your mom. What was she like? And for over 90 minutes, we shared lots of wonderful memories about my mom. And it was fun hearing my dad, who was in his mid-80s at the time, talking about how he met my mom in her 20s recounting his courtship with her. How you, you often don't picture your parents as young lovers. And then how, and then how they met. My dad was supposed to be set up by his best friend at a party, but his best friend forgot to make my dad a date, and so he ended up with his best friend's date. And then it's all history. And then my sister and I reminiscing about the fun things we did with her, what her life meant to us, what it will always mean to us. And I thought, too, of the reading from 2 Timothy that Clark did. Like Timothy, it was my mother who first instilled in, within me the seeds of faith. And as I thought about all of those conversations, I thought, too, about another conversation that will take place one day. Hopefully not for a while. But at some point, maybe Cindy and my daughters will meet with your next minister who will ask questions like, tell me about Michael. Katie Holly, what was your dad like? Now more so than all of you, those three people, they see me when I take the tie off or the robe. They've had a window into my life that reveals what I look like when I'm not on the clock, when I'm not a minister, a spiritual leader, but just a husband, a dad, an ordinary guy. And that picture is not always beautiful. And so as I imagine in my head that conversation playing out, there are some things they might say that I'm not proud about, some things I wish I hadn't done. 
and other things I wish I had done. And while none of us can change the past, all of us are pretty darn powerful when it comes to the future. How we respond is entirely up to us. We can't control what happens, but we can control how we respond. And then I thought, too, of that wonderful last scene from Our Town, where Emily comes back to life after being dead for a number of years, and I think she comes back on her 12th birthday, and near the end of the scene, near the end of the play, she says, Oh, Earth, you're too wonderful for anybody to realize you. What a sad statement that none of us really realizes what we've been given until it's too late. A planet flourishing with life. And then Emily turns to the stage manager and asks, do any human beings ever realize what life is while they live it every single minute? And then Emily closes as she walks away They don't understand, do they? How sad that the greatest gift any of us will ever receive, life. The odds that you or I should be here today are mind-boggling. Still too often we go through our lives on autopilot. We take for granted that we will wake up tomorrow. Not everyone will. We stumble through life mindlessly. But one of the wonderful gifts a place like this can give to each other is to help us appreciate what we've been given and then to help us completely embrace our mortality. And when we do that, we discover that what makes life precious is that one day it will be over. And when we aren't afraid to acknowledge that, We disarm death's great power to prevent us from fully living before we die. Death is not a curse to be outwitted. Death is the natural pivot upon which life turns, without which life could not be. Death and life are ultimately linked together, and it's an integral part of our stellar story. The fact that every single star will one day die, will die, makes possible for its heavy elements that created the star's life to be released into the universe. And that is why, because stars die, we have rocky planets and carbon and nitrogen and oxygen. And most importantly, you and me. And when we talk openly about these things with the people we love, We can experience a great sense of freedom and live with more purpose and meaning right here and right now. As we rediscover our innate capacity for love and trust, the power of forgiveness, and the peace that lives within each of us, as we come face to face with life's precarious nature, we also come to appreciate its preciousness. We don't want to squander one minute We want to enter our lives as fully as possible. Instead of pinning our hopes on a better tomorrow, we focus on the present and being grateful for all we have here and now, right now. In his wonderful little book that was written about 20 years ago, Ira Bayak, in the book called The Four Things That Matter Most, said, the four things that matter most, please forgive me, I forgive you, thank you, I love you. And then about 20 years later, he was asked in an interview on NPR, if you could add something to that book, what would you add to those four things? And he said, tell your children today, I'm proud to be your father. I'm proud to be your mother. You all have a homework assignment. Share your wishes with the people. That was really beautiful. (laughs) Thank you, Carolyn. (laughs) Tell your spouse, I am so proud to be your husband, your wife. Talk to the people you love. Share your wishes. Ask for forgiveness. Don't hold grudges. Clean out the attic and your emotional attic. And while you're at it, today, don't forget to tell the people you love 
how much you love them. Amen. And then in that spirit, let us close this service singing hymn number 299 for all the saints. Now, having gathered for worship, may we go forth with a great sense of joy, purpose, and peace. And don't forget to tell the people you love that you love them. Amen.